A very warm well welcome to the news in details. Now, President Paul Kagame has congratulated Kenya's president-elect William Ruto following his victory announced on August 15th. The head of state said in a tweet, I quote, on behalf of the government and people of Rwanda, I congratulate our brothers and sisters, the people of Kenya, for conducting peaceful elections on 9th August 2022. I also congratulate his Excellency Dr. William Samaruto, the president-elect, the government of Rwanda attaches great importance of the good relationship and cooperation between Kenya and Rwanda, end of quote. Ruto's victory was announced by Kenya's Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission after gathering 7,176,141 uh, votes, representing 50 0.49% of the total valid votes. Moving on, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, and his family, as well as other Rwandans, were counted on the first day of the census. The Director General of the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, Murangwa Yusuf, was the one who did the work. <laughs> As you know, we have been preparing the census of all Rwandans and all residents of Rwanda. So today, on the 16th of October, which is the day the census begins, we asked the President of the Republic of Rwanda for a plan to identify his family. So today, we identified his family together with the First Lady to get all the complete family information. First, we explained to them how the census is prepared and we explain to them the questions we are going to ask them. After that, they agreed and answered everything as we planned. What we ask runners is also to welcome the census clerks and give them all the information about their health, depending on what they will ask them. As the nationwide population census kicks off today, residents have expressed their willingness to provide all the information required of them. Precious Chirezi has this report. As the fifth nationwide population census comes to a start, residents that have been surveyed and those who haven't have conveyed their willingness to provide the information required of them to ensure Rwanda's fiscal budget is up to par. <laughs> The clerks have been well received and we're more than ready to answer their questions because we know it helps the government improve our living conditions in the long run. Census clerks say day one of the census went well, however, it wasn't without its hindrances. The process of labeling certain houses made them wish they wouldn't have to encounter them again during the census. The census is going well in general, but one of the difficulties we have experienced is when people living in apartments are hesitant to let us in, but that is a rare occurrence. Working in the evenings has also been challenging. The clerks have been prepped to do so in cases when members of the household aren't available during the day. The nationwide population census takes place every 10 years and the information retained from it serves as a basis for the country's development initiatives. The census is also what confirms the exact number of those residing Rwanda without a reasonable doubt. Precious Shrezi, RTV News. Thank you. Thank you, Precious, for that report. Now, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning has released a citizen book guide containing information about the 2022-2023 budget. Umbrella of Human Rights Organization in Rwanda finds that the book is important in ensuring that the information it contains reaches citizens who are also the beneficiaries of the budget. Sam Kalisa has this report. The citizen book contains important information about the budget where the government and local authorities are responsible of disseminating and communicating the information it contains to citizens since the budget is prepared based on the public opinion as confirmed by Rehema Nabutebi, the Director General of the National Budget Unit at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. 
twabonye ko ari byiza cyane kugira ngo nabo bamenye ko ibyo batekereje We thought that it is important for citizens to know that what they suggested is included since we want them to play a role. They need to know that their role is very important in the execution and implementation of the national budget plan. Meral Mabgana Maguru, Kigali City Vice Mayor in charge of urbanization and infrastructure, noted that this book will help citizens to take responsibility in protecting what has been achieved in a given budget period. When citizens witness that the infrastructure they requested, like schools, hospitals, or electricity are included in the budget, they make efforts to protect them, and no one can destroy them on their watch. Safari Emmanuel, the executive secretary of CLADO, noted that the organization will monitor closely to ensure that both local leaders and citizens are updated with information contained in this citizen book. We requested leaders to distribute them and reach citizens uh, so that they can use them. We will follow up to make sure that citizens have them and understand the content in this book. The citizen book indicates how the budget has been channeled to different government institutions and decentralized according to the plan, such as in terms of improving service delivery, citizens' welfare, education and so on. It shows how the budget has been distributed among the provinces of the country in numbers and percentages based on the approved projects to be implemented. The Ministry of Trade and Industry as well as the management of the private sector has promised that in the year of 2023, there will be no limitations to the opening of the exhibition in Gahanga, which they say will facilitate becoming the most important exhibition of its kind in Africa. On the other hand, for 25 years, the exhibition has promoted med in Rwanda products that continue to gain visibility and popularity. Now, Isabel Masozerazes report. With just hours to the closing of the 25th International Exhibition in Kigali, the traffic is increasing. In addition to buyers of various equipment, there are those who are asking for information about new products and various services in this fair. Visitors say that as the years go by, there's an increase in the number of products and services that are made in Rwanda. In recent years, the fair has focused more on products from foreign countries. I visited to take out Made in Rwanda products. I wanted to buy a bag and shoes. Some have better quality than the ones from other countries. There are many things with good quality. In addition to visitors, exhibitors of Rwandan products, including those who have been participating for years, say they have no doubt about the benefits of the event, which has promoted Made in Rwanda products. Foreigners have also participated in the fair for many years, and they believe that in the future, the exhibition will go to another level. 20 years, my brother, 20 years I came in the uh, exhibition. I came in first time in, in, in a stadium before, a stadium, in the international before in, uh, in a stadium, not here, not in Majerwa, uh, Rimera, a stadium in Rimera. Now it's changed, she come here. I'm first one here in the Rwanda, but now I, I, this one is different. Business go up. Business in Rwanda go up, no, no come down. Everyone who tell you this business in Rwanda has come down is a liar. The 25th International Exhibition started on July 26th and will end on 18th August 2022. The Minister of Trade and Industry emphasizes that as the years go by, it will contribute to the country's economy. It is a very big thing because it shows that for the last 25 years, many Rwandans have showcased their products and those who visited saw that Made in Rwanda products have become something credible. It means Made in Rwanda has become big. The expansion of the exhibition venue will be phased. It is expected that next year the first part will be completed. The president of the private sector federation, PSF, insists that the expansion of the exhibition will take it to another level. 
abantu bitabira kuza mu Rwanda mu Expo ni benshi people who visited the expo are many there are also those we don't inform because of the capacity of the venue but in the next 3 years we will expand and if we get the support we need it will be one of the biggest expos in Africa and the world since the exhibition started in 1997, it has been attended by 100 exhibitors. The number increased to almost 500 and later 350,000. The first month of the exhibition brought in 62 billion Rwanda francs, while that number drastically increased in 2021. Isabel Masozera, RTV News. Media professionals in Africa are urged to avoid hate speeches and speeches that promote divisionism and rather put the interests of Africans first in order to avoid falling into the colonial trap. Nureth Agasaro has this report. Since the emergence of the fighting between the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the M23 Rebel Group, had speeches increased on social media and in different media outlets in DRC. Targeting Kenya Rwanda speaking Congolese language, especially those Tutsi. The Association of Media Regulators in the Economy Community of Central African States expressed concern about such expressions. It is a very serious problem because when you look at the social media, particularly, you find this hate speech, either from individuals, groups, or targeting authorities, targeting tribes, targeting countries, targeting uh, communities, and so on and so forth. It is a reality. And sometimes it can provoke a community into violence. And when I think about violence, I think about your country, Rwanda. And I want to seize this opportunity to congratulate the authorities of Rwanda, headed by His Excellency Paul Kagame, for the warm reception and the exemplary leadership he has shown uh, to the rest of Africa, coming out of this very serious crisis which you had uh, in 1994. Today, Rwanda is the pride of the continent. And I want to also seize this opportunity to call on journalists and the press that they are the eyes and the ears of the public and they have to act responsibly to give the, the, the people just the right information which they need to have. They are the ones who have been trained how to collect and treat information for consumption by the public. And so they have to do that in the most responsible manner, respecting the ethics and the ontology of the profession. Cleofas Barore, the chairperson of the Rwanda Media Commission, also believes that the African media should not fall into the trap of colonialism but should work for the benefit of Africans. Talking about African media for Africans means that we see that there is another media that works for the interests of those who set it up and sells their culture and promote their interests. Sometimes some of the effects and some of the problems Africans have is the influence of the media. I believe that if we continue to meet like this, we may not have that media that we think is the media of Africa for Africans, but we can start by discussing it. Then later on, people will reach to the point where they say it is necessary. This comes as from Tuesday in Kigali, the first ordinary general assembly of audiovisual and communication regulators in the economy community of Central African states was started. The Minister of Rwanda Local Government, Gata Bazija Mariviani, notes that the fact that this conference is being held in Rwanda is important for the participants because of the history that Rwanda has gone through and it will help them understand the impact of head speeches. We have been through difficulties due to the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda and the role of the media to prepare and execute the genocide have been very evident. We asked them to visit the memorials to see the role of the media in destroying the country instead of promoting unity, but rather promoted hate speeches that led to the genocide against the Tutsi. But it is to show how Rwanda, under the leadership of His Excellency Paul Kagame, was able to get out of these problems and be able to change the lives of the people. As they said, this country has come from far due to the serious issues it has been through, and for the time being, it is now in good conditions. The media has also been involved, 
which is why Rwanda has put laws that gives media the order of line they need to work through. The media has the ability. We also appreciate the role of media in rebuilding the unity of Rwandans and helping them to know their rights and remind them of their responsibilities in order to improve themselves. The economic community of Central African states consists of different countries such as Angola, Cameroon, Central Africa Republic, Chad, DRC, Equatorial Guinea, Gabo, Congo Republic, Sao Tome and Principe, and Rwanda. Nuriat Agasaro, RTV News. The management of blood transfusion division at the Rwanda Biomedical Center says that the campaign is being met to request people to donate blood in order to increase the amount of blood stored for blood transfusion purposes in hospitals. Muyombo Thomas, the division manager of blood transfusion division at RBC, says that in the last three days, blood type O positive and O negative have increased by 300% to what they used to receive. There reaches a period when we receive patients with a similar particular blood group, which regardless of the amount of blood we have in the storage, is scarce yet on high demand, which is why we did this campaign to collect the particular blood on demand and more for future emergencies. The blood groups that were highly demanded were O plus and O negative. For those who are not familiar with blood groups, those two blood groups donate blood to the rest of other blood groups, but specifically O plus can donate to O plus, O minus, and other blood groups which are positive, which is why it is highly needed compared to others. About 500 plastic blood bags, including O plus and O negative, were collected in just three days which is 300% more than the blood we usually receive. We had given ourselves a timeline of three days, but up until today, more people are still volunteering. Dr. Miombo Thomas also says that those with O- type, which is rare, are encouraged to donate blood to save the lives of those that need it. Let's suppose one gets to the hospital over bleeding and there is no time to first check the blood group. In such cases, the only blood type that is allowed to be given is O- because it can't have any bad effect to any given blood group. This is a rare blood group, which is why we urge anyone with blood group O- to volunteer because a time will come when they need it, as well as an O- can give an O- when they need it as well, which is why although it's rare, we need a high amount of it to save patients from car accidents, women that have lost a lot of blood during a childbirth, and many other cases. When a doctor recommends a blood transfusion to a patient, it only means that it is a life and death situation. The management of the blood transfusion division at the Rwanda Biomedical Center says that the amount of blood currently available in hospitals is at the rate of 97 percent. All in 2014, the blood available was at a rate of 47 percent. In 2021, 71,933 units of blood were collected, including 35,156 units of O plus type and 2,360 units of O minus in Rwanda. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.